Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve design, add, and search words data structure. So this is another problem from the blind 75 leak code problems list. So this is the spreadsheet I've been using to track which uh, videos we've uploaded for those 75 problems. You can see that most of the solutions have already been updated. And today we are working on this problem, a tree problem, add and search word. So basically another day, another problem from this leak code blind 75 list. The link to this sheet will be in the description if you do want to take a look. So basically we're designing a data structure to efficiently solve this problem of basically adding words. We're taking new words, adding them to the data structure, and also we're being given words and we want to search to see if those words match any previously added words to our data structure. So we only need to support three functions for this data structure. One is just going to be the constructor that's going to initialize the object. One is going to be adding a word and that one is pretty self-explanatory. So we're just given a string, a word, and then we're adding it to the data structure. Now this word could only consist of lowercase characters from lowercase a to lowercase z. And the third one is going to be the one where the bulk of the algorithm is going to be contained. So this is going to be the searching words. So we're searching a word and the word can contain any character from lowercase a to lowercase z, but there's one additional character it could contain, a dot character. And what we're told is that the dot character is actually like a wild card. It can basically match any character in the string. So for example, let's say in our word list so far, let's say we had just a string A, B, right? So this is what we have so far. And we're trying to search dot B. So basically, would this search match any words that contain so far in our data structure? The answer is yes, because the dot would match any first character, right? So this that we basically match this lowercase a and then we do have an additional b which matches the second character in the string so a dot matches any character that's what's going to be tricky for us to implement now the brute force way to solve this problem is pretty simple right we would basically have a list of words and then just for every search, we would just say, okay, does this search match any of the words in the input list? Now that's not gonna be super efficient. A more efficient solution is gonna require a try data structure, AKA a prefix tree. So this is what we're gonna be using to solve this problem efficiently. I will say if you've never heard of this data structure or you've never implemented it before, you basically don't have a chance of solving this problem efficiently. But if you have heard of this data structure, it's pretty intuitive why this data structure is used in this problem. Basically, you know, a prefix tree, right? So for example, if we were searching B dot dot, we would wanna first find all, uh, all words that start with the character B and then check you know, are there any of them of length two because the remaining portion of this can match any string of length two. So a try is basically a tree that has some kind of root node and each node can have up to 26 children in this example because we have lowercase characters from A to Z. So basically each node is gonna represent a single character, right? And then each node could have up to 26 additional uh, children. And basically a word in this case, for example, you know, this is A, if I had a B here and then another C, this is going to be a single word, right? And and so if we inserted the word, let's say we added the word A, B, C into our try, this is basically how it would look like. Now, one additional thing we have to say is for a particular node such as C, we have to say this is the end of the word, right? Because what we're trying to say is we did not add the word A, we did not add the word A, B, we've only added the word A, B, C. So we have to designate that this is the last character. Now, if we added another word, for example, A, B, what we're going to do we're not just going to repeat that we're not just going to say okay now there's going to be a lowercase a here then there's going to be a lowercase b notice how we already have those characters available to us we're going to reuse these characters so instead what we, we would do adding this word we would say okay let's add an a so let's start at the root add an a we see there's already an a that exists then we'd say okay from here let's add a b we see that a b already exists so once we get to the end of the word, right? That was the last character. Then we would just say, okay, designate this as an additional end of the word. So now we have two words along this path. We have one word AB, we have another word ABC. 
Notice how all words starting with an A are going to be here, right? We could have other words, a maybe a T or something, right? And other words as well, right? Basically, all words that start with A are going to be here. That's what makes this efficient. That's why this is called a prefix tree, because let's say we wanted all words starting with, let's say we were searching something like this, right? We're searching a, B, dot, dot, dot. So we want all words, for example, or even one word of length five that starts with A, B. Then we'd go, okay, let's find A, then find B right here. And then we'd go through all possible children that it has right in the tree. We would do a brute force depth first search backtracking type approach. And then we'd get a word. We would try to find a word like this one. So with that being said, let's run through the example. You can see at the above, the first word that we're going to be adding is bad. So let's add a, a character for B. Let's add a child for this A. Let's add a child for it D. So now we have inserted the word bad. We do want to designate this as the end of a word. So I'll just mark it blue. But in our code, obviously, we're going to do something different. Next, we're adding another word, dad. So we have to start along a different path because these two words have a different prefix. One starts with a B, one starts with a D. So let's additionally add A and additionally add D. Once again, designating this as the end of a word. We're going to add one last word before we start searching. This one's going to be mad, so we don't already have an M, so we do have to insert that, and then we have to insert A and then D. Of course, this is going to be the end of a word. So, so far we have three words. All of them end with a D, but they all, th all three of them have different prefixes. That's why they're along different paths. Now let's get to the searching part, the interesting part. So we're going to search for a word pad. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the beginning, right? Are there any words pad in this. So first we're going to try, are there any P's? We're going to look, is there a P? We don't see any, right? We only have B, D, and M. So we don't have any words starting with a P. That means immediately we know false. Pad does not exist in our input. That's why in the output over here, you can see false is what's returned. Next, we're searching another word. That word is going to be bad. So we're going to start at the root and see, are there any Bs? We're going to see that, yes, we do have a B over here. The next character in the string is A. So does this B have a child A? Yes, it does. It has an A over here. The last character is a D. Does this A have a child D? Yes, it does. It's over here. Now, we yes, we found the characters we needed, but now lastly, we have to say, okay, the last character that in the searching word is D. Is this in our try? Is this designated as the end of a word? Since it's marked blue, it is. Therefore, we're going to return true for this uh, input searching word. And you can see that's what's written in the output. This returns true. Let's go through the last two search examples. So in this example, we have dot a d. So what does that mean? Remember, the dot character means we can match any character. So we're going to start at the root and we're going to go down all three paths or or literally any of the paths. And to do that, we're going to have to use depth first search or basically a backtracking approach, right? And remember, we're only looking for one word that matches this, right? So let's say the first path we decide to go down is this one, right? So uh, this is a B, and we're allowed to use a B because the dot matches any character. So this matches so far, right? Next, we're at the next character, A. Does this path have a child A? Yes, it does. So we found another match. Next, we're looking for a D. Does this have a child D? Yes, it does. And it's designated as the end of a word. So in this case, we found one word that matches this. And that's all we need. We just need one word. So we are going to return true. And you can see that up above. Now, if this one did not match, for example, if this wasn't designated as the end of a word, or maybe this was instead an X character, we would say, okay, we didn't find a match down this path, but it, it doesn't matter because remember the dot matches any character. So we don't have to go down this path. Let's try going down this path, right? And we would do the same thing. We'd say, okay, we have an A, we have a D. That means we found a match. That means we can return true. And you can see that this is not going to be super efficient, right? We possibly, we would have to go through every single character that's in our try decision tree. But it's still more efficient than a brute force approach, especially for this next last example. 
So we're doing one last search, and in this search we have we start with a B, but then we have two dot characters. And the reason this is more efficient with a try rather than just brute forcing every list, because this at least tells us, okay, we're starting with a B. So what we're gonna do in our try decision trees, we're gonna say, okay, every other word that starts with any other character than a B, we're not going to consider them. And we have a pretty small try right now, but it's possible we could have a really big one, right? So what this does for us is it eliminates a lot of the possibilities. We say, okay, at least we know we're starting with a B and yes, we did find a matching B. So we can go down this path. Now we get to the brute force portion where we have a dot, right? So basically in this case, it's simple because we only have one child, but maybe we'd have multiple and then we'd have to go down all of those paths. But in this case, it's simple, right? Let's just check. Do we have any characters that go below it? Yes, any character will match this first dot. Now we're looking for another second dot. Do we have any characters that match it? Yes, we have a D and it's the end of a word. So yes, in this case, we also found a match so we can return true just like we have up above. So once you can kind of understand this visual example, it's not super hard. Now it's time to actually implement the code and I'll admit that it's actually a little tricky, but I'll, I'll try to guide you through it. So one thing I like to do for try problems is just define a try node because it's gonna have a couple uh, variables. So in the constructor, we're basically gonna initialize two fields. So for this try node, we are gonna have a list of children. Now I'm gonna use a hash map for that. So basically what I'm gonna say is for each character, we're gonna say something like, you know, A is mapped to a try node. And we could possibly do that for every lowercase character from A to Z. And for every character, we also need to designate if it's the end of a word. So I'm just going to use a Boolean for that, call it word, and initially we'll set it to false. And so basically the only thing we need to do for the constructor for the constructor of the word dictionary is just define a root. So let's call it root and it'll just be a try node. So initially you can see that we don't have any characters inserted, right? We just have an initial empty try node. It doesn't have any children, so no characters are inserted. Next, we are gonna do the add word portion. This portion isn't too difficult. So what we're gonna do is we'll set current equal to what our root is. So self.root is where we're gonna start. And what we're gonna do is basically go through every single character in the word. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if this character is not already inserted because it's possible this character could already be inserted in the try. So we're gonna check if, if C is not in current dot children of the current nodes children if c is not in there then we're gonna, we need to obviously insert it right so what we would do is say current dot children of c is going to be a new tri node where we inserted a tri node corresponding to the character c and then of course what we're going to do is we're going to update our current pointer to this uh new tri node if it didn't already exist, that means we just created it. If it did already exist, then we just shifted over to it, right? What we're ultimately trying to do is insert every character from this word into our try. And once that's been completed, what we're going to do at the end is say, okay, current dot word is now going to be set to true. So we have created the characters and designated this as a word. Okay, now for the actual meat and potatoes of this problem. And this part is actually gonna be recursive and let me show you why before we actually start doing the recursive portion. So this is gonna start similar to what we had before, right? So current is gonna be initially set to, let's say self.root, right? And then what we would wanna do is go through every single character in the word. In this case, I'm actually gonna use the index of the word and you'll see why in a moment. So for I in range length of the word, and then we're gonna get the character at position I, so word of I. And so remember, this character could be any character from A to Z, in which case the problem would be straightforward, right? We would just search our try and see does this character already exist, and then we'd continue. If it doesn't already exist, then we would return false. But we know this character could actually be a dot character. That's what's gonna make this tricky. So if C equals a dot character, the else condition is if it is a regular character. Now let's start with the else case because it's a little more simple. So if C is just a regular character, what are we gonna do? We're gonna check if C is not 
in current.children. That means this character does not exist. We needed this character to exist. We're searching for this word, but this character does not exist. So what do we do then? Well, simply we can just return false. That means we know for sure this word does not exist. If it does exist, then obviously we're gonna shift our current pointer to that node. So we're gonna go to current.children at character C. And then we would just continue our algorithm, right? But this case is gonna be a little bit more tricky because remember, if the character is a dot, that means potentially we're going down 26 different paths because this dot could match any of the 26 characters. And we can't really do that iteratively very easily, right? We are gonna use backtracking or recursion to help us do that. So for example, let's say we had a string like dot AB. What we would wanna do then is say, okay, dot, it could match any of the possible characters. So what we would say then is that we would go through for every child in current dot children dot values, because remember for current dot children, that's a hash map. And then we want only the values because those are gonna be the actual children. So, because we know the dot could match any character. So for this dot, we would basically match every single character. And then we'd say, okay, for each of these, we want to do the recursion on it. So we want to do the depth first search on this. And when we're actually doing that depth first search, it could just be an iterative matching. So what we're trying to, what I'm trying to get at is that this entire thing that we just wrote is the recursive function. This is the depth first search, right? We have the iterative portion here where we don't have a dot and we have the recursive portion over here where we do have a dot. So let's wrap this entire thing inside of a depth first search function. Depth first search, DFS. And so let's just tab it over. So now let's think about it. When we're doing our depth first search, what are we gonna pass in? Well, we want to know what's the remaining portion of the word that we are trying to match, right? So we would wanna pass in the index. So let's call that J. We're passing in the starting index J, right? And the other thing we're passing is what's the current root that, or the current node in our try that we're at. So in this case, if so depending on which one of these we're iterating through, we're gonna pass in that child node, right? So so that's what the, the node that we're gonna be passing in, whatever child that is. So that's how we're gonna call DFS. So let's define that up above. So J is gonna be uh, the index parameter and let's call root what the node that we're passing in is. So, okay, so current is, instead of being called self.root, it's actually gonna be initialized to the root that we end up passing in. And okay, so here I passed in J, but we would what we would actually pass in is gonna be I. Actually, not just I, but I plus one because we're going down a child. So we're gonna pass in I plus one as the index of the character that we're looking for, right? Because, because what we're saying is we're skipping the dot, so we're gonna have to increment I plus one. And this function is gonna return a Boolean. So if this function ends up returning true, that means we found one path that matches. And remember, if we find a path that matches, we return true immediately, we're done, we don't have to do anything else. If we don't find a path, we're gonna keep going down all possible paths until we do. If we never find a true, if we never find a match, then we're gonna return false. Oh, and one more thing. So initially up above, we said I is gonna go through range of the length of the word, but we know we could be starting at a different position. Here, we're always gonna start at zero. We don't wanna do that. We always wanna start at J, whatever it happens to be. So that is the main recursive portion. And the last thing is, Let's say we were given a word ABC and let's say we found a match, right? We, we didn't have any dots in here. What would that do? Well, we'd go through the for loop. We'd always execute the else condition and we would always find the current node and then the entire loop would be finished. Then what would we wanna return out here? Well, we would wanna return whatever current happens to be. So if current.word is true, then we would return true. If current.word was false, then we would return false. So we can just leave this as it is. So that's the main portion of this algorithm. The last thing that we wanna do is actually call this depth for search function, right? So what are the parameters that we're gonna give it? Well, we're always gonna start at index zero because we're gonna start at the beginning of the word. So we can pass in zero for J. And we're always gonna start at the root node of our try. So we can pass in self.root as the root node. And then we would just wanna return the result that this DFS function returns. So as you can see, this function did work and it does work pretty efficiently. 
So if you didn't already know what a try was, I hope that you learned that today. So this is the entire code. And if you did already know what a try was, I hope that you learned a new application of it. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.